Now we want to look at what happens if we repeat an atom, an ion, or a molecule in a regular periodic arrangement. So, for example, if we have a setup as we have here, each of these gray positions is an identical environment to the other one. I can go from one gray uh, species to the next uh, by going a fixed distance. So in this particular direction, this distance is called A. In this particular direction, we call the distance B. And if I go up in this particular direction, I call this direction C. And if we were to extend this pattern uh, fully in three dimensions, infinitely, I would have a gray atom here, another one here, and then a distance A, there would be another one here. In every A in this direction, I would have another uh, atom. If I go in this direction to the left, a distance B, I would again find an identical atom. And if I go up, a distance C. So A, B, and C, these distances, are three of what we call lattice parameters. To fully define uh, the three-dimensional arrangement, we need six lattice parameters. Three of them, and we had just seen, are A, B, and C. You can kind of see on our uh, model here where A, B, and C are. And then we have the angles between these three vectors. So one of the angles is alpha, which you have right there. We have beta over here. And the third one is gamma. So if we define alpha, beta, gamma, A, B, and C, we have fully defined our three-dimensional lattice. One thing we should be careful of by looking at this particular model here is not to fall into the trap of assuming that the angles alpha, beta, and gamma have to be 90 degrees. For this particular model, they happen to be 90 degrees, but we will see that there are crystal systems where alpha, beta, and gamma are not 90 degrees. So let's first look at the most highly symmetric of the three-dimensional crystal systems, the cubic system. This is an example of the so-called cubic system. In the cubic crystal system, A equals B equals C. So we have each of these lengths of the parallel pipette uh, are equal so that we have a cube. And we see that the angles alpha, beta, and gamma are each 90 degrees. <clears throat> So this is exactly what we would think of when we think of a cube. So all the lattice parameters are identical for the cubic system. We can make a slight modification to the cubic system, keeping all three of the lattice parameters identical to what they were, but now we've added a, an atom at the absolute center of the cube. We call this a bodied centered crystal system since we now have, in addition to having atoms, ions, or molecules at the corners, we also have the same identical species exactly at the center of the cube. So this is said to be body-centered cubic. Next, we have a second modification to the cubic crystal system. In this case, in addition to having uh, an atom at each of the corners, at each of the vertices of the cube, we also have an additional atom at the center of each of the six faces of the cube. So we turn it around, we can see that there is an atom at the center of each of the six faces. This is the so-called face-centered cubic. It also goes by an alias of cubic closed pack because it turns out that if we have we treat the atoms as spheres. This is one of the two most efficient packing systems that are available. So if you wanted to pack the maximum mass of atoms into the smallest possible volumes, there are two ways to do it uh, most efficiently. And one of those ways is face center cubic. So we also call that cubic close pack. For all three of the cubic type, the cubic primitive, sometimes known as simple cubic, the body-centered cubic, 
and the face-centered cubic, the point group symmetry of the Reves lattice is point group OH, the octahedral group. And this is perhaps the most highly symmetric of all the crystal systems, the cubic system. Since all six of the lattice parameters are identical, A equals B equals C, alpha equals beta equals gamma. Now suppose that we take the simple cubic lattice and keep A equal to B so that this particular face on top and on the bottom is a square, but now allow the uh, lattice parameter C to be different than A or B. So now we're like letting C be longer than A equals B. So now A equals B, but they're not equal to C. Alpha, beta, and gamma are still 90 degrees. So we still have a parallel pipette. It looks like a, a box. Kind of looks like a shoe box where the ends are a square. And this is a crystal type known as tetragonal. So this is a tetragonal system. This has a point group symmetry of D4H. We recall that in the cubic system, it was possible to add another atom at the center of the crystal to form the body center cubic. Well, we can do the same type of thing in the tetragonal system. So now we have, rather than body center cubic, we have body center tetragonal. So one of the possible variations of the tetragonal system is to have a, an atom at the center of the lattice. And this is still a member of the tetragonal system. So recall, A equals B, not equal to C, and alpha, beta, and gamma are all equal to 90 degrees. We can try to lower the symmetry even further and to achieve the orthorhombic system. Here, A, B, and C are all now different, but we still have that alpha equals beta equals gamma equals 90 degrees. So now each of these lengths, A, B, and C, is different. So it looks like a shoebox where the end of the box at any one end is a rectangle rather than a square. So this reduces the point group symmetry from D4H down to D2H. So this is the orthorhombic system. And we'll see that we have three different variations of this type of lattice. So this is the primitive orthorhombic. When we have the primitive version of any crystal system, we'll notice that we have an atom, ion, or molecule, uh, our species, only at the corners, only at the vertices, and nothing on the inside. So primitive means that we have nothing on the inside. Sometimes these are also referred to as simple. So it might be called simple orthorhombic. Just as we were able to do for the cubic system and for the tetragonal system, we are also able to insert another atom at the exact center of the crystal to form the so-called body-centered. So here we have body-centered orthorhombic uh, in the same sort of way as we had body-centered cubic and body-centered tetragonal. So we still have the atoms at the vertices, at the corners, but we also have one directly in the center of the crystal lattice. Another one of the Brevais lattices in the orthorhombic system is an entirely new type for us. We are able now to, in addition to having uh, an atom at each of the vertices, uh, at the corners, just as we did for the primitive type, we are now able to add an atom at the top and at the very bottom of one of the faces. So this is not all the faces, it's just one of the faces. So we often call this a base centered. So this would be base centered orthorhombic. It doesn't matter whether you think of it as the top and bottom um, or left or right or front or back because if we turn the crystal around, we're free to change the axes any way we want. The X, Y, and Z axes, A, B, and C parameters 
are interchangeable. So we just relabel them and it doesn't make a difference. So here you see from several different angles, you look at it from that way, kind of looks somewhat primitive, but there we can see the, uh, the base centeredness of it. And then we can turn it around this way. And we can also see the primitive atoms there. Last but not least for the orthorhombic system, we have, just as we did for the cubic system, we can have a face-centered version. So this is face-centered orthorhombic. Notice that in addition to having atoms at each of the corners, the vertices, we also have one at the center of each of the six faces. So notice it's different from the base-centered. The base-centered, we only had it on two faces. So here we have a, another atom at the center of each of the six faces, in addition to, to the corners. So this is the face centered orthorhombic. And again, all the orthorhombic crystals have an overall point group symmetry of D2H.